Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking Get Static Props, which is used in Next.js apps. Now this video is gonna cover what is Get Static Props, when to use Get Static Props, how to get fresh data if you are using Get Static Props, and overall, the advantages to Get Static Props. So before we begin writing up some code and showing how get static props works, we should probably talk about what it actually is. So get static props is an asynchronous function that allows you to pre-render a page at build time using the props that are returned from the request. And this is obviously a form of static generation that is extremely popular in the Jamstack world and obviously Next.js. Question that we get a lot is when should you use it? Well, the answer is there's quite a few options. Maybe you have a headless CMS that would give you an option. Um, maybe you can have this publicly cached, for example, like a blog. Um, and the page must be pre-rendered for that SEO and making sure you rank on Google. So what if you need fresh data? So you've built this amazing blog, for example, and you have static data. Well, with Next.js, you have this incremental static regeneration. By using a combination of get static props, as well as the revalidate property, you can actually get fresh data. And this will allow you to publish a blog and then retrieve the data so that your users never see that you've updated your site and you don't need to build that site either. So obviously I just talked about some of them, but here are some more advantages of the static regeneration. So there's no spikes in latency. Pages are served consistently fast, just like static generation. Pages will never go offline. So if you build your blog and then for some reason, the Next.js app cannot get that latest data, it will still show the old screens so that your site won't go down if there is a problem with the API. And of course, load database and backend load because they're already pre-computed. So that means that you're only getting a small piece of this data. So that covers the theoretical parts of this video. So we're gonna move on to the code and I'm gonna show you what happens when you use get static props and how that works. And then I'm gonna show you how to use incremental static regeneration as well and show you the differences between having just a statically generated site as well as one with the incremental static regeneration. I've created a simple template here that we're going to use to show the examples of get static props and the revalidation that you can use to do incremental static generation. So all we have here is just some Shakri UI that I'm using to display to the users as well as just the basic home function that comes when you create a Next.js app. To use get static props, all we're gonna do is use the asynchronous function I mentioned previously. And using that asynchronous function will give us the ability to use these props at build time. So the way this works is you're going to export an asynchronous function called get static props. Next, you're going to make a request to your API of choice. For example, a CMS, or in my example, we're gonna use the user's API that I've set up for previous videos. So all you're gonna do is make a request and we're gonna do an, a fetch that we're gonna await for. And then we're gonna put our API in here. Then you're gonna handle the API so we're gonna do const data equals, and then await response.json. And at that point, we'll have the data ready that we can now use as a props. So we need to return this. So return, then props, then our data, and that's it. So what's happening here is it's going to go out and fetch this piece of our API. Then we're going to use that and return the JSON version and make sure that it's easily for us to map over or use in general. And then we're gonna return that props called data 
that we can use in our home function. So now we have that, we need to go into our home function here and actually use it. So we can type data in here, and that means that we now have access to this data that is returned. And what I'm gonna to do to make it easier, I'm going to call this all users, and I'm gonna do data.users. So now we can use this all users for whatever we want. Underneath our heading here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a list, and then inside of that list, we're gonna map over all the users and return a list item for each one. To create a list, it's just list and then the style type that you wanna use. So in Chakra UI, there's two types. There's numbers or there's unordered lists, just like anything else. So we're gonna use style type disk, and that's gonna be our unordered list. Then inside of that list, this is where the map piece comes in. So we're gonna do all users. And as long as there's data here, we're actually gonna map over them. So do all users dot map. And inside of that map, we're going to use the user and we're going to then produce a list item for each one. So a list item, similarly to any other kind of part of an unordered list, you need a key. So the key here is going to be the user.name. And then inside of that list item, we're going to have two things, the name and their location. So to do that, you can just type user.name and then a comma and then user.location and hit save. And now what we should have is a list in our page that we can see and show all the users from our database as a static prop. As you can see here, we have two users, Stephen and Test, and they both live in London. Now, with that being said, at this point, this data, if updated, we wouldn't actually know about. So to test that theory, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my database here, and I'm gonna add another document. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clone the document and call it Chris, and hit insert. Now in a regular world, when you use SWR, for example, SWR would just give you the data automatically, and you'd see that on the screen here. But as you can see, the data has not been updated. And that's fine because it's a static property, and we want this to just be fast data that rarely gets updated as a whole, but may have small pieces that get updated. So if you do need fresh data, what you can do is inside of our code, we can change one tiny element and that will get us fresh data every time. Inside our static props function here, inside this return, what you can do is use the revalidate and the revalidate will get a new static file ready for the next user. So it's not immediate, like you're not gonna see an immediate change when you make this change and you have it deployed and you're pulling in this static properties at build time. But what will happen is, for example, you have a new blog post and you've just posted it through Sanity and then your next JS app, the next time that a user hits the site, they will see that new change. And all you have to do is type revalidate and then how many seconds it should try and revalidate. Now I'm going to set this to one. So every second it's going to try and revalidate our data. But if you're making a blog post, maybe you want it to revalidate every 10 seconds or every 15 seconds or every 10 minutes. So you can set it to some sort of variant that you know that after a while, your app's going to get updated. That new blog post is going to be available and your users will be able to see it. So what I'm gonna really do now is I'm gonna show this in real life. I've actually deployed this to Vercel so that you know that it's not just because I'm hitting refresh and localhost is compiling the page, but we're actually seeing the changes happen. As you can see now, I've deployed this to Vercel and we have the same amount of users. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do 
a change here again. I'm going to insert another document by cloning a previous one. So let's go ahead and clone this test in London and we're going to call this one um, Chad. And Chad is from North Carolina. And we've inserted that document and we can now see it's here. And if I go back here, nothing has really changed. But if I go to static props again and we just do that, you can see right now nothing has changed. Do it one more time just to make sure. And now you can see that Chad has come alive. So what happened here was I visited the page and that caused it to revalidate the data. Then I revisited the page as a new user, for example. Now Chad from North Carolina has been pushed out and the next person will get it. Now, if we add another person, the first person that visits is gonna get the, the old version. Then the next time somebody visits, they're gonna get the fresh data. So you can see how get static props is really useful for blog posts because you can use that alongside everything else and make sure that your newest blog post gets pushed out to Next.js. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop it a like, make sure to hit subscribe to learn more about Next.js and development in general. And until next time, see ya.